let's finish up our discussion on simple linear regression and, and talk about the types of tests that we can run in this particular case. So up to this point, we've uh, found the model, we've interpreted the coefficients, we've discussed the goodness of fit, and now let's do some statistical testing. Okay. There are two statistical uh, testing, two types of statistical tests that we can do. We can do uh, a test uh, for the significance of the overall model. Right. That's the whole model. All, all the coefficients intercept plus all the slopes. That's one thing that we can do. And the second thing is we can test uh, the significance of an individual coefficient. So in one case, we test for all of them together. And then in the second case, we test for one specific one. Okay. Right now, we're going to start off with the test for the overall model. So inference for the overall model. Uh, it still has the same six-step procedure. There's a, a null and a high alternative hypothesis, which we'll discuss the form of them in a, in a moment. And of course, as with every test, there's a test statistic. And the test statistic for the uh, significance of the overall model is called an F uh, test, uh, F stat or an F ratio. So that F ratio is just a comparison of the mean squared regression relative to the mean squared error. So in essence, we're testing uh, or comparing how much of the variation in Y we're able to explain relative to the amount of variation in y that we're unable to explain. The bigger that number, the better our model, right? The more we can explain relative to what we can't explain, the better our model is. And that makes sense. Uh, and so now that we have our F ratio. It's got an intuitive appeal to it. Now, what's the nature of that? F statistic. Right? We've, we've seen many statistics so far. We've seen a, a Z stat. We've seen a T stat. We've seen a, a chi-squared statistic. And with the T statistic and the chi-squared statistic, they had degrees of freedom. And uh, those were an important component of each one of those respective statistics. F statistic, exactly the same. Okay. Now, what is essentially going on with the numerator and the denominator? Looking at the numerator for this F statistic, it's a mean squared of the regression. Squared. And so we're squaring stuff. Well, it's like variation that you can't explain relative to variation you can explain, right? Mean squared error is variation you cannot explain. Well, we've, we've dealt with variation before, right? Chapter, in Chapter 11, tests for inference, right? It was a chi-squared test statistic. Here, the, the, the trick uh, the interesting component is we have a chi-squared distributed variable, mean the SSR and the MSR follow a chi-squared distribution. Uh, the MSC follows a chi-squared distribution. So we have a chi-squared distribution in the numerator, a chi-squared distribution in the denominator. Well, chi-squared distributed variables have a degrees of freedom. So we will have a degree of freedom for the chi-squared uh, distributed variable in the numerator, and we'll have another different degree of freedom for the chi-square distributed variable in the denominator. And that's what we see here when we're looking at this formula. Right? In the numerator, SSR is divided by the number of predictors in the model. Predictors, we remember, is the number of independent variables. Simple linear regression has one independent variable. When we go to do multiple linear regression, We'll have more than one variable. And for the error, it's n minus 2. It works out to be, in general, n minus the number of predictors minus 1. And in a simple linear regression case, p is 1 because the number of predictors is 1. This is an important concept, an important component moving forward, not so much in this particular unit, but definitely of huge importance when we get into multiple linear regression 
and it is a point that is really easy to miss because it feels very theoretical, but it's not. It's actually very applied, it's very procedural, uh, and we just have to make sure we were following the proper procedure. So we have a degrees of freedom in the F-stat for the numerator and a different one for the denominator. And uh, the degrees of freedom for the numerator is just the number of x variables. And the degrees of freedom for the denominator is just n minus that number of x variables minus 1. Okay. Anytime you report an F-stat, there should be two numbers that you should report for each of the respective degrees of freedom, one for the numerator and one for the denominator. And I know I've said this, I've been going on about it for a little while now. It's just a common mistake to forget at least one of the degrees of freedom. Uh, and one never likes to see that. Okay, so nevertheless, we've got our six steps. We have our HO and our HA, right? We have our alpha. We have the test statistic itself, which for us is very easy. It's very convenient. It's right there on the output. We have a p-value for the computed F statistic. Again, very easy, very convenient. It's right there on the output. We have to make that decision using that rule. Step five, make the decision and the conclusion. Well, is the model significant or is the model not significant? Well, pretty straightforward. So let us go back to our situation that we have here with our particular output. So I've just got a snippet of our particular output. Uh, and now let's roll with our HO and our HA in this particular case. Step one. Right. So we're testing for the significance of the overall model. It's usually pretty clear that it's the overall model because you see the words mentioned overall model. Right. So there's your there's your there's your key words right there. Okay. Step one. What's our HO? What's our HA? Okay. Right now, our, our HO and HA are going to be very general. They're not, not going to have any Greek letters in it. A and we will assume the model is not significant. Uh, unless we can show otherwise. Model is significant. So HO is that the model is not significant. Model is no good. And that follows the standard scientific hypothesis. We assume something is not uh, useful, not relevant, doesn't explain anything until you can prove that it does. Step two is alpha. And we can assume any reasonable alpha. Let's go with uh, 0 0.06 in this case. Okay, Any reasonable alpha or whatever alpha stated in the question. As we know, a lot of complexity goes into that type 1, type 2 error and, and uh, the comparison. Step 3, well, that's the F stat. Right? I look on my output, and what do I see? I see an F stat at 98.47. I'm going to have a numerator degrees of freedom, and I'm going to have a denominator degrees of freedom. My numerator degrees of freedom is the number of independent variables, which I see represented here under DF for degrees of freedom of 1. And for the residual, I know, remember residual error, they're synonyms, right? So different packages will call it error, some packages will call it residual, and we see that there's 21 there. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Step 4, the p-value. Now, for reasons that I cannot explain, um, on Excel, they call the significance F is the p-value for the overall model. Okay. Times 10 to the minus 9. So very, very small p-value. What happens when there's a very, very small p-value? Well, it means that p-value is definitely less than any reasonable alpha. Therefore, what do we do? We reject H0 with that alpha of, in this case, 0 0.06. What does that mean if I've rejected H0? I'm stuck with HA, and we can conclude that the model is significant. 
Okay. Not too bad, right? Fairly straightforward, the output, as well as our knowledge of test statistics, and things flow uh, very, very nicely uh, from step one to step six. Okay. Um, next segment, I'm going to split this up into two segments. Next segment, we'll talk about the test for a particular coefficient, a particular specifically named coefficient. Right here, notice the wording, test for the significance of the overall model. Next step will be the test for a specific coefficient. And there are two distinct distributions, very similar, same test structure, but discussing or testing different things. Okay, thank you.